Klein with the Rubin Museum of Art. Uh, it's great to have you here with us today. The Rubin, Rubin Museum, as you might know, is a museum of Himalayan art and ideas located in Chelsea, Manhattan. Um, but we've taken things online during the last many months um, and we're really excited to be starting out 2021 um, by continuing our online programming. Um, so today we have a really, really fun activity for you, uh, all about exploring who you are and what makes you, you. We're gonna pull up an image um, actually that introduces us to an entire floor of art in our museum. And this is an exhibition that's happening on our sixth floor that we have um, a group of art pieces by different artists um, all gathered together. And the exhibition is called Measure Your Existence. And you can actually see in a corner painted on the wall, the name of the exhibition, Measure Your Existence. So existence is actually kind of a tricky word. It means being alive or being real. And today we'll be exploring this more through art making later on with our teaching artist. And all of the artists in this exhibition have also explored their existence. So we've got artworks from them that connect with this Buddhist idea that all things change over time and nothing really stays the same. So we're going to take a look at one artist who explores how time is actually a big part of existing. So this is an artist named Derching She, and he was born in Taiwan, but he lives in Brooklyn and he's been living here for years and years. So the photo that we're looking at here is from this huge project that he did years ago, all the way back in 1980. That was 40 years ago. And the project is called in one year performance. So the art project actually took an entire year for him to do. Every day for an entire year, he would record each time an hour passed on something called a punch card. So let's actually take a closer look at a punch card. So can you spot those little tiny lines of black writing? These are stamps that a machine puts on the card each time you put it into the slot at the top. So let's go ahead and look back at that first picture of Der Ching She, and he's putting the card into the machine to get one of those stamps. So for years and years, people would actually mark when they start and end working at their job using a machine just like this. Now, most jobs use computers to do the same thing. Um, this card is from a Tuesday, April 15th, 1980. And if you look really, really closely and count up each of those little black lines of writing, they add up to 24. That's 24 punches in the machine for each hour of the day, right? So 24 hours in a day means that there was 24 times that he put the card in the machine. And each time that he did this, he would also take a photo of himself. So this was the artist's way of measuring his own existence for an entire year by recording the time and by taking a photo of himself and seeing how he changed over that time. Can you imagine that? An entire year of doing this every day, every hour. He didn't get a lot of sleep. So I'm going to introduce Aaron, our wonderful teaching artist, who's going to take it from here. Great. Hi, everybody. My name is Erin. As Becky said, I'm really excited to be here and to lead this art making workshop. Um, and one of my favorite things about this art piece by Der Ching She is this idea of change, right? That we all are changing all the time 
every day, even every hour, even though it might seem like we're always the same, but so much about us ourselves is changing. So you could imagine that the artist over a year, maybe his hair is growing, right? Or maybe this clothing is a little bit more rumpled one day versus the other. And so many aspects of ourselves change, not just about how we look, but also how we think about things and how we approach it. Um, you could imagine that Shay as well in the beginning of the year might have thought differently about this project than he's thinking at the end of the year. Maybe he's more tired, right? Has less sleep. So there are all sorts of ways that we're changing. Um, and so we're not just fixed people, right? And that's something that I think is really powerful with this work. And we're gonna be exploring that kind of idea today and also diving just deeper into who are we, what makes up who we are as people, um, and how people see us, how that changes over time. And we're gonna, in a similar way that the artist does, we're gonna create a kind of document that is like a snapshot of who we are in this moment. So as I'm guiding you through this activity, really begin to think about all of the different aspects that make up your identity, um, who you are, things you like, the people that also make up who you are, so you can start to think about what communities you're part of, what cultures you're part of, all of the things that come together to make up who we are and that shift and grow all the time. And how would you document that? Or how would you put that into a kind of snapshot, right, of this person in this moment of time? I have an example that I made yesterday of this project, and we're gonna be doing kind of collages. So this is an example of a collage that I made. I'll bring it up close to the camera. And you can see that it's in the shape of my foot. <laughs> so we're actually gonna be tracing a part of our body. It could be any part as long as you're able to trace it, you can have someone help you. And then we're gonna do a collage, fill it in with found materials, anything that you have at home. And you can see that I have some paper that I found from magazines and newspapers, and then marker as well, the regular pen here. And you can really be creative with this and choose as many materials as you'd like. So I will walk you through what this will, how this will work. And I'll start just with our materials. You can see that I used greenish paper for this one. Today, to make another one, I'm just gonna use white paper, but really any color that you have access to at home. Again, this is your choice, whatever you'd like to create. So let's say you maybe want to do one on black paper. You could absolutely do that. I have some pink paper as well. I mean, it could be your favorite color. It could be something that is important to you. Maybe that symbolizes something you care about. You could also explore trying to find colors that maybe match your tone of your skin. So if you want a deep kind of rich brown or tan or beiges, really anything that you'd like. And it can mean anything at all. But again, today, I'm just gonna use this white paper. I also am gonna have scissors for the collage. I'm gonna use some tape. You can also use glue, whatever would work to bring your collage together. I also have some markers. So you can see I have kind of a wide array. If you just wanna use a pencil, that's perfectly great. Regular pen, but also have some Sharpies, get colorful. Like on all these materials, it's really what you would like to use, but these are the ones that we suggest. And then I have lots of different collage materials. So I'll show you an example of some things that I collected. And this is one of my favorite parts about collage is that you can collect things all the time. So whether it's a coupon catalog that's left on your fence every day, or if it's a publication that you get in the mail, or if it's old scrap of paper that you find, you can really pick up anything and find things that are important to you. So I'll show you just through some of the things I have here. I've got this kind of interesting paint thing that I liked how it looked. Thinking a little bit about place. So here's this Manhattan drawing that I found to mark my um, existence in New York. Things like, plants, love plant life. This made me kind of think of art, the way that this person's hand is. Pizza, because I really like pizza and food is really important to me. 
Uh, and then I also have this clipping here, which is of an album I like because music is also important to me. So this is just a, a sample and just talking you through that because you can look through your materials and really find anything. But again, just to remember to think through what makes me me, what is unique about me, right? What feels most important to who I am and what are all the little things that kind of make, make us up. So the first thing that we're gonna do though, I'll put these to the side, is you're gonna choose which part of your body you would like to make this collage from. Today, just for ease, I'm gonna do my hand. I'll do my left hand. So I'm gonna show you here how I'm gonna kind of place it how I want. You can experiment with where you wanna place the body part. If someone's helping you, that could be useful. They can trace it for you. You can again get very creative. If you want to do your head, even somebody could trace that for you, whatever you like. But today I'm just doing my hand and a little bit of my arm. So I'm gonna really slowly just kind of outline around my hand. Maybe some of you have done this before. I always think it's really fun. And it doesn't have to be exact, but you're just kind of tracing. Awesome. So there is my hand, and this is going to be the outline that we will work from. And then you can really get started. We all color this bit in, start thinking about clippings that I want to add. So this is really where the creativity comes in. so much for working on this project and again keep working on it I had a lot of fun doing this all right Erin and thank you everyone who participated today don't forget to join our newsletter at rubenmuseum.org slash new e-news um, and you can also share your fun creations when you feel like they're completely done on Instagram um, using the hashtag Ruben Families. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.